in regards to getting lymphedema. I bet you would be surprised to learn there is no compelling evidence that blood draws or blood pressures in your involved arm increases your risk for getting lymphedema. But it is actually true. Research has evolved over the years, changing the way we understand lymphedema risk and practice. Unfortunately, though, sometimes it takes a while for the accuracy to filter through the healthcare and survivor realms. And this is certainly true for cancer-related lymphedema precautions. Data now tell us that sitting on the couch will not protect you, taking it easy will not protect you, and lifting weights won't increase your risk for lymphedema, it will actually decrease your risk. There are about 600 lymph nodes in the human body, and what moves lymphatic fluid through the system is muscle contractions, movement of our body parts, increased breathing rate, and increased heart rate. And that, my friends, screams of movement and exercise. So gone are the days we say don't lift, don't pull, don't push, don't carry. In this episode six, we are talking about lymphedema risk reduction. What are the evidence-based ways you can protect yourself? And we are busting the myths of the old precautions that don't have any evidence behind them. There is a ton of awesome info in the next 30 minutes. So you know what? If you're watching or listening, hop on a treadmill or go for a walk. And stay tuned at the end for our episode recap. Whether you are podcast watching or listening, I appreciate you being here. I'm cancer physical therapist, Dr. Leslie Walke. Please hang around until after the show to learn how you and I can engage directly in my incredible cancer survivor membership group, Recovery Room Plus. This is the Recovery Room Podcast, discussing all things cancer and cancer recovery. We bring you the experts, accuracy, understanding, and next steps you need to be healthier, more confident, make better decisions, and live your best life after cancer. Christina Miner of Our Scars Speaks podcast. Welcome to the Recovery Room Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I'm really excited that you are here today. Yeah. You are a cancer survivor, and uh, we are going to be talking about um, lymphedema risk reduction today. So this is a conversation right. for people that are at risk for lymphedema, which is a lot of people who have cancer because mm -hmm. many, many, many cancer surgeries involve lymph node removal. Right. So, uh, so let's talk about it. You know, you, you have said that you are one of the many, many people that just goes in for blood draws and you get all this wacky stuff that they say and do that actually is not evidence-based. So we'll talk right. about that because it can be torturous. Sure. So I'm gonna fire questions at me and let's just try to talk about this and help people understand better so they can make, again, better choices, better decisions Absolutely. based on actual evidence and science. Absolutely. Right. So to me, I think the best place we could start is really for individuals who may or may not know, like what is lymphedema? <laughs> That's a great place to start. <laughs> so is edema means swelling mm -hmm. and lymph is the name of the fluid. It's in between our skin, which is pretty skinny, right? And right. the muscle underneath. So it's like a little teeny space called the interstitium. That's the space between the skin and the muscle. And that space is fluid in it. And that fluid is called lymph fluid or lymphatic fluid. Okay. Too much of that fluid in that space, okay, is lymphedema, right? And you can oh. actually see it sometimes. You can see it sometimes because if there's enough, you can actually, it, it'll push up your skin. So you'll see lymphedema, okay? okay? That fluid contains all the nutrients and oxygen that our, our, our muscles and cells need to grow and divide and live happily. So in that little system, mm -hmm. there's supposed to be fluid interstitium. Okay. But when we get too much for some reason, when the system backs up, which can happen mm -hmm. after lymph node removal, which is why we're talking about this conversation, right. when there's too much, it can cause swelling in a particular body part. Um, and sometimes that swelling um, can actually have a firmness to it. Like if you mm -hmm. put your thumb on it, it can leave a dent. Right. Uh, so that's lymphedema. It's an accumulation of excessive lymphatic fluid in a body part. Okay. So with right. that being said, I guess my next question would be like, how, uh, why are people at risk for lymphedema, especially, yeah. you know, having the lymph nodes removed? So what was the risk factor for that? Why are they at risk? So right. if a cancer is going to leave 
original location, it sneaks out in one of two ways. It can sneak out through the bloodstream. And most often it'll try to sneak out through the lymphatic system. Okay. Mm. Um, and then lymph nodes are actually filters along the lymphatic system. So if there is something in the lymphatic system that doesn't belong there, a broken cell, a bacteria, a virus, right. or a cancer cell, the lymph node will grab it and then hold on to it. Okay. So if and when your, your cancer team wants to learn, geez, what's the likelihood that this, that this tumor, these, this, wherever this cancer tumor is, that it's tried to escape from here? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we know it's, it's going to do that. It's going to try to do it through the lymphatic system. So let's grab a couple of lymph nodes around that tumor and then put them under the microscope and see if there's cancer cells in there. Oh, right. Okay. Because then they say, okay, there's no cancer cells mm -hmm. in these regional lymph nodes. So it's unlikely that there's going to be cancer floating around the rest of your body. So it's unlikely that we're going to need to treat you with systemic therapy. Okay. Right? Or, you know what, that Mr. Smith, sense. we found cancer cells in the lymph nodes around your tumor. Therefore, it suggests that you're, that those cancer cells have tried to get out. And therefore, we are going to treat you with chemotherapy or some other systemic therapy. So it helps your medical team um, stage the tumor mm -hmm. and then helps determine what is the best treatment for you. Okay. Okay. Now, the problem is that the only way to know if there's cancer in those lymph nodes is to put them under a microscope. Mm. And to put them under a microscope, you got to take them out of the body. And right. once they're out, they don't regrow. Okay. And our lymphatic system is pretty robust. Mm -hmm. um, we have about 100 lymph nodes in the entire body. Wow. So there's about 100 plus in the neck. Mm -hmm. um, there's about 100 plus in the, in the groin. Each armpit has between 35 and 45 lymph nodes in it. So there's a bunch of them there. So usually they can handle radiation and they can handle surgery uh, most of the time and they don't, it doesn't affect the system enough to create a problem. But in some instances, if that lymphatic system doesn't function correctly, it can slow down the re reabsorption of that lymph fluid in the interstitium and then that fluid starts to back up a little bit. Oh, okay. And that's when people can notice stuff in their arm or their leg. Okay. okay. So that's so, why the people are higher risk for that. Well, risk for it if they've had their lymphatic system compromised by having certain lymph nodes taken out. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. that's perfect. So, so the lymphatic system is everywhere in the body, mm -hmm. okay, from toes to your top of your head. It's kind of split into four sections. So if you split somebody right in half down the middle, you have a left side and a right side of your lymphatic system. And then if you cut somebody right along the belly button line, you have an upper and then a, a lower quadrant. So you have the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant. Okay. okay? So if, so each, they have their kind of their own little lymph node world. So if you have lymph nodes removed from your right upper quadrant, which would be your right underarm, mm -hmm. that area of your body is at risk for lymphedema. So you can't get lymphedema in your left leg if you had lymph nodes removed from your right arm. If you only have lymph nodes removed from your right arm, you can't get lymphedema in your left arm. Wow. Um, wow. So that's why people are at risk. Okay. Now, it's really important to talk with your surgeon, your, whoever's listening, your surgeon, because your case may be different than somebody, it will certainly be different than somebody who has a different kind of cancer. Right. And um, sometimes where the lymph nodes came from in that particular quadrant or how many came out can impact your risk level a little bit, right? Because yes, one lymph node removed technically puts you at risk, but it's super, super, super low. Okay. All right. And uh, to somebody who's had a lot of lymph nodes removed from the groin for some cancers, there are some cancers that have a 50 to 60% risk of lymphedema uh, in, in the groin area because it's just they have to take so much for some particular kinds of cancer. So it was always important when we have these conversations that you need to start your educational level with your physician right. and find out, okay, how many came out? What does that mean for me from a risk profile? Um, so you know exactly where you're, where you're standing. Wow. Okay. So how bad is it? How bad 
can this become for a patient? It can be like any other condition. It can be very, very mild. Mm -hmm. Okay. And most conditions today, most cases of lymphedema, most are in the mild to mild to moderate range. Okay. Because of improvements, we can get the same information today Mm -hmm. with less damage to the lymphatic system, taking fewer lymph nodes than we could, you know, 20 years ago. All right. So lymphedema still exists, but it's certainly less frequent, less common, and it's Mm -hmm. usually less intense. All right. Or, 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 so it's usually mild to moderate. There are still cases of severe. So it can be mild to moderate, can be mi- moderate, moderate to severe, it can be severe. But in most cases, it's in the mild to moderate range. Okay. So that brings me to the next question, which is what can people do to reduce risk? So if you are at risk for lymphedema, mm-hmm. all right, there are a lot of things that you can do to either keep your risk there or even minimize it a little bit further, because there is evidence now that physical therapy can actually can reduce the risk even below your baseline and actually prevent some lymphedemas. All right, so there are four major things people can do to minimize risk. Uh, number one, the, mo- the most common precipitator of a lymphedema is getting an, an infection in that quadrant or that body part, okay? Again, remember one of the jobs of the lymph nodes is to fight infection. Mm-hmm. So if you have fewer lymph nodes in that quadrant, sometimes a, a normal, a little teeny bug that would normally be taken care of can slip through and cause a problem. Okay. So that's why people are at increased risk of an infection in that quadrant. So that particular leg or mm-hmm. in that particular arm, that particular chest. Um, and then that can set off a lymphedema, which can be hard to, to get rid of. All right. So the number one way to minimize risk of developing lymphedema is to protect yourself from infection. Okay. All right. So that does not mean you can't garden, you can't sow, you can't golf. That means when you garden and when you golf and when you sow that you be be careful with your skin. Right. But we're human. And if you're human, you're going to scrape, scratch, burn, puncture (laughs) your skin at some point. Again, in that particular quadrant. So when you do, you don't need to panic, but you just need to keep that, whatever your bite or puncture is, keep it covered and clean until Mm -hmm. it heals. And if it does not look like it's healing well, you can call your primary physician or your cancer doc and say, hey, you know what, I've got a cut on my involved leg or arm and it's just not looking good. They'll probably offer you an oral antibiotic over the phone. Okay. Okay. To risk of getting an infection. So the signs of infection are redness, Mm -hmm. warmth, pain, and swelling, right? Now, even if you only have redness and none of the other three, I would still call your your physician uh, just to make sure they'll probably put you on an oral antibiotic, okay? Number two is to maintain a healthy body weight. Mm. We don't know why. But the studies show that people who gain weight after treatment, which is pretty much every human as we get older, we tend to gain weight, right? right? Uh, And that, for some reason, increases risk of lymphedema. Mm. So we need to be careful with body mass index. Okay. One of the most powerful things you can do, number three, is to either uh, with, hopefully with your physical therapist, Mm -hmm. is return that particular body part, whether it's leg or arm, back to 100% strength, 100% range of motion, and that the tissues, the skin needs to move nice and long and it's moving over. It's just pliable and nice and moves good and it lengthens and everything's moving okay. Okay. All right. That's really important. What moves lymphatic fluid is um, movement of the body part, Mm -hmm. muscle contractions in the body part, increased heart rate and increased breathing rate. So those four things scream of exercise. Right. So a arm or leg that has had lymph node removal, a will have a stronger lymphatic system if the arm or leg is healthy. Okay. So gone are the days where we say, Oh, don't push, don't pull, don't lift, don't carry. Hogwash. That was exactly the worst thing to say to somebody. So now if you have lymph nodes, it's incredibly important that you are have 100% range of motion, that you are 100% strong, that you are using your arm or your leg, because the more you use it, the healthier your lymphatic system is going to be. So it's been kind of a a, a huge shift 
mm -hmm. in, in education and training. And then finally, the fourth thing that reduces risk is mm -hmm. regular exercise. Uh, and again, remember we talked about two, two of the things that move lymphatic fluid are increased heart rate and increased right. breathing rate. <laughs> right. So when you're taking a walk, you're actually increasing your lymphatic flow. Uh, when you're exercising, bicycling, dancing, walking, running, mm -hmm. skiing, whatever it is, you're increasing lymphatic flow. So studies show that people that exercise regularly okay. have less lymphedema than people who don't exercise regularly. Okay. So to repeat those, then the best ways to reduce risk, minimize your risk of infection, keep your body weight normal or get it back to a more normal. And that, again, that can take months or years. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. So just work on a healthier body weight. And then number three, um, get to a physical therapist because your arm should be arm or leg, 100% flexibility, strength, pain-free, moving normally, because we want you to use it. Because mm -hmm. muscle contractions, movement of the body part moves lymphatic fluid. Right. And then regular exercise. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that are actually proven to decrease risk of lymphedema. Okay. So now that should be the end of the conversation. However, yeah. <laughs> when you go to the doctor, what is all the crap that they tell you that you can't do? Well, interesting you asked that question because <laughs> I just left the doctor um, not too long ago. And they are, when they see that I'm a survivor, they're like, oh, do you have lymph nodes removed from anywhere? And I was like, oh, yeah, I have two on one, two on the um, side that didn't have cancer. And I had three on the side that did have cancer and a couple in my chest area. And they were like, oh, mm -hmm. we can't, we can't draw blood from your arm. And I'm like, well, my breast surgeon stated that you could. And yeah. mind you, when I get blood drawn, sometimes it's from different locations. Um, and they are just like, no, we can't. It's, you know, regulation is the hospital. We have to go in your hand. Now, when they did that the other day, they literally butchered my hand because they were having the worst trouble getting blood. And I was sitting there looking at a perfect vein in my arm, but they would not touch it. So the the two probably most common um, classic lymphedema precautions are no blood pressures, no blood sticks, all right, on mm -hmm. the involved arm. Right. And, um, but, but it turns out that those precautions were developed in the 50s and 60s uh, and just done conventional wisdom, right? right? Well, we don't want this bad thing to happen, so let's not in, do anything bad to this arm. But, and those precautions, like no flying, yeah. um, what are the other ones? No hot tubs, don't push, don't pull, don't lift, don't carry. Right. Um, Shaving. Yeah, don't shave because you're going to cut yourself and you're going to get an infection. And, and oh my God, you know, don't, don't, just don't do anything. Well, it, it turns out that when we started studying people who broke every rule um, mm -hmm. and people that were out doing stuff, you compare them to the people that were sitting on the couch, they had the same lymphedema rate, right? right? So we're like, hmm. So we have flight attendants that have lymph nodes removed. They're flying a thousand times a year. Um, right. And people that never take a flight, they have the same lymphedema rate. Um, people that are, you know, we have Olympic body, Olympic athletes that have had cancer surgery, right? right. And they're, we've had bodybuilders who have had lymph node surgery and they're off doing their thing, not getting lymphedema at any different rate than the people that are sitting on the couch. So we're like, hmm. Well, then we're like, okay, so those precautions were never based on science ever. Okay. They were just based on conventional wisdom and they literally have just been propagated. Um, so everybody knows that you're not supposed to do blood pressures, needle sticks. But when you say, do you know why? They're like, no, I was just told that. Literally, it has been propagated by habit for decades. And now just literally in the last 10 years, we are now starting to say, okay, now they're actually looking at research and doing research saying, you know what? There is no, nor has there ever been any evidence that doing a blood pressure on an at-risk limb increases lymphedema risk. Wow. There is not evidence, nor has there ever been evidence, that doing a blood draw on an at-risk limb increases risk for lymphedema. Okay? So, but that is so ingrained in the cancer survivor culture. Mm -hmm. It is so ingrained in healthcare. And it is so ingrained in our lab techs because they're told, oh, my God, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. So your institution is to a point where your medic medical people are like, yeah, there's no, there's no evidence that you need to do that, but it hasn't trickled down to the lab yet. <laughs> Not at so, all. <laughs> uh, right, right. 
So do you have to, If and again, this always comes down to a decision, your decision, your consent. If you don't want to have blood drawn from your arm, you don't have to, all right? But knowing that it's not increasing your risk to do so, um, and it's always going to be a decision. And if you need to have a conversation, you have a conversation with your surgeon, right? right? Because they're the ones that went in there, right? Right. Um, and just say, listen, I'm hearing out there is no evidence that these things actually increase risk. And they're probably going to say, mm -hmm. you're correct. There's no reason you need to avoid that stuff. Um, and for some people, they've had lymph nodes removed from one arm. Over the years, the quote unquote good arm gets the crap yeah. trashed out of it. You know, and it's just like it doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense to keep brutalizing right. people in an arm. And I've had people call me at three o'clock in the morning because they get dehydrated or they get the flu and they end up in the hospital and they can't get they can't get a vein right. in their quote, quote, good arm because it's been trashed over the years. And now they're going to stick something in their neck or their arm or they're like, they're like, do they, I'm like, they don't have, they don't have to do that. There's no evidence that, uh -huh. that putting a needle in your, your arm with lymph nodes removed is going to increase your risk of, of, of lymphedema. So it does, it does matter. Wow. Uh, but again, always a conversation between mm -hmm. the patient and your surgeon about what your risk is. Right. Um, because the risk for somebody who's had one or two or three lymph nodes uh, of developing lymphedema is less than, it's around 5% over okay. your lifetime. So that's really low. Right. Okay. Um, if, if for some reason you've had, you know, level three lymph nodes removed and radiation to your, you know, supracurricular mm -hmm. lymph nodes and your range of motion is terrible and you're overweight and you get chronic infections, then maybe mm -hmm. you take this, you say, you know what, I'm not going to, I, this, there's so much, <laughs> there's right. so much, just, I, I'm, I'm going to choose not to do that. All right. Um, but again, knowing your risk profile, what are your other confounding factors mm -hmm. that you can make the decisions based on yourself? So I have people say, you know what, there's, the risk is so, there is no risk for me getting it. So I'm not, and they're from now on, they're not, they're going to use my, I've got beautiful veins in my involved arm. They're going to use those and it's not going to increase my risk. So it's always, mm -hmm. always, always going to come down to, your understanding of the actual evidence at your right. particular case. And then, and that's how you can make better decisions for, for your particular healthcare. And if you're still at a place where they're behind the eight ball, cause it's, it's rolling out. Yeah. So most of the major cancers, you know, there's the, the old signs on the door, like do not use right. the left arm for blood pressure. Right. Those are gone. Okay. Um, in most of the major cancer centers now it's off of our website. We don't teach that anymore. We've removed it from all of our, so when wow. we talk about lymphedema risk reduction with our patients, right. it's those four things. Minimize your risk of infection, maintain a healthy body weight, exercise regularly, and make sure that arm or leg is moving and functioning perfectly normally, regular exercise. Those are the evidence-based ways to minimize your risk. So that's mind boggling for people. <laughs> it really <laughs> is because you just had me to think of something that happened um, real briefly. I had purchased uh, the sleeve and the glove because I was going on a plane because that's what I heard that my, <laughs> my breast surgeon was like, she was like, you do not have to wear that. She said, I can't tell you not to. She said, but you, I, I would not recommend it. But I did. I was like, no, I'm gonna get it just in case. And so I wore it and flying to California, I thought my arm was going to fall off. <laughs> that, compression, <laughs> that compression sleeve. And that glove was so tight. And I was like, oh my God, did my arm, did it swell up because I had it on? So I, I tested myself. I flew back to the East Coast without it, perfectly fine. I did some yoga stretches in the airport, perfectly fine. Yeah. Nothing yeah. at all. Yeah. And your surgeon's right. Two things. Number one, it's there is no evidence, nor has there been evidence, that wearing a sleeve will prevent lymphedema. Okay. okay. Number two, there has never been any evidence that flying increases risk of getting lymphedema. Yeah. What, how, that, that, how much did that cost you? Oh, uh, the insurance, the sleeve thank in the goodness, glove. paid for the majority of it, some of it, but I still had to pay a hundred and some dollars for it. Yeah. She was like, yeah. I hate for you to have to pay for something that I know is not going right. to probably benefit mm -hmm. you. I hate that they even and offered it to you. <laughs> Right. So, but now here is another point that is really important because I heard you say, well, what the heck? I'm just going to do it just because maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> the problem is, first of all, there's no risk. There's no evidence that doing that activity flying right. is going to increase your risk. Number two, that there's no evidence that 
um, wearing a sleeve is going to prevent yeah, anything. So you just, in the first place, hospital. even if you were going to get something, which wasn't going to happen right. from that. Um, and then, but here's the kicker is, and you, again, this happened to you, that there is evidence that when they studied prophylactic use of compression sleeves, that it, first of all, didn't prevent anything. A bunch of people that were wearing the sleeve in the study ended up getting hand swelling from yeah. the wearing the sleeve prophylactically. So yeah. it's not helping you for a problem that doesn't exist and it can cause problems. So you are smart enough to leave that damn thing off. Yeah, okay. that and a sports bra. Because you know, they said compression and I was like, oh, I'm a, I was in a mess when I got to, to the West Coast. <laughs> but I did get coming back. Flight anyway, right? <laughs> Yeah. So what are the other, what are the other myths? Hot tubs, there's no evidence that. Yeah, there's about um, hot tubs. Yeah. So saunas um, increase, because then again, the, the thought there is that, um, you know, you're increasing blood flow to that limb and it may not be able to handle it and it's going to cause mm -hmm. a lymphedema, but that doesn't fall out in the, in the research. I've heard about razors all the time and I'm thinking they are just saying right. because they may get an infection. Oh, you can shave, just don't cut yourself. Right. You know, there's no, it's, it's not the actual loss of the hair follicle that's going to cause the problem. The problem is, again, infection. If you are somebody who gets infections mm -hmm. in that limb a lot, um, then maybe I would be really careful when you shave. Right. Or instead of using a razor, use a, a, an electric razor because you're like less likely to cut yourself. Oh, yeah. um, but again, that's the risk there is, is that it's not the razor that's going to cause the problem. It's the potential risk for infection that could potentially lead overstress your lymphatic system and create, and create a swelling. You already mentioned about exercise, but some of the ladies within the community was always talking about, well, what about weight lifting? And I was like, no, I think you should because it's still getting everything moving. Um, yep. But yeah, that, that was a big thing. It was yep. like they did cardio and didn't mind it, but they were terrified of lifting weights. There is specific research um, by my dear friend, Dr. Katherine Schmitz, who's one of the world's most prolific cancer exercise researchers. They did studies on lifting weights, um, both for people at risk and people with lymphedema. All right. So for people at risk, not only is it not unsafe, it actually reduces risk mm. for people because remember what moves your lymphatic yeah. fluid, a healthy muscles, muscle contractions, movement of the body part, increased heart rate, increased respiratory rate that moves lymphatic fluid. Mm -hmm. All right. So there is no evidence that lifting weights is harmful. And there is evidence that it's actually safe. And I have people that are bodybuilders and like that's, they like go into competitions for how much they can lift. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, go girl. I have no qualms about this increasing their risk for lymphedema because it just, it just doesn't. Um, so sitting on the couch does not protect you. Right. And actually being active and lifting actually decreases your risk. Okay. Good information. Wow. So it's just movement is medicine, movement is motion, uh, movement, movement is magic. Right. So, and that holds absolutely true for um, your lymphatic system. Wow. Okay. Perfect. So this has been good. It has. So in the comment section, let us know, what are you being told? Are you getting updated information or old information? What are the um, precautions, quote unquote, precautions that you've been told? And uh, leave those in the comment section. And you can also call the Recovery Room podcast voicemail at 414-373-0700 and leave us your story on our voicemail. Christina Miner, always a pleasure to talk with you. Um, again, Christina Miner is the, the host of our Scars Speak podcast. You can check her out. I'll put her link in the show notes. Thank you, Thank you my friend. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk again soon. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Before we get to the recap, I want to tell you I love having you in my listener community. So if you haven't already, please follow and subscribe to The Recovery Room on YouTube and Facebook and to The Recovery Room podcast. Please share these wonderful free resources with your support groups, family, friends, and your medical teams. I also have an incredible Cancer Survivor Community membership group called Recovery Room Plus. I'd love for you to consider joining. In Recovery Room Plus, you get direct interaction with me, in-depth cancer recovery info and experts, and really cool live events like yoga, book discussions, cooking demos, member meets, and much more. I would love to connect with you.
You can learn more about Recovery Room Plus at recoveryroomplus.com. I will leave the link in the show notes. In this episode six of the Recovery Room podcast, we learned the primary reason surgeons remove lymph nodes from your body is to better stage the cancer so they can better come up with a more accurate treatment plan. Unfortunately, though, the body does not regrow lymph nodes, so the limb in the area where those lymph nodes came out may be at increased risk for developing lymphedema. The evidence-based ways to decrease your risk of lymphedema is, number one, to make sure the arm or leg around the area where your lymph nodes were removed has a full strength, full range of motion, and full mobility of the skin in the area. Number two, engage in regular exercise. Number three, stay at or move towards a healthier body weight. And number four, minimize your risk of getting an infection in the limb that is at risk. Research clearly indicates that if your limb is appropriately rehabbed, it is not only okay to lift, push, pull, and carry, it's good for you to push, pull, lift, and carry. If you can't do these things with ease, get to a physical therapist as soon as you can. Lymphedema risk reduction is a nice win-win because when you are healthier, have less pain, move better, do more, you decrease your risk of getting lymphedema. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. Leslie Walke of the Recovery Room Podcast. Treat yourself like you are the most important person on this planet because you are and exercise like your left depends on it because it does. (laughs) 